Ignacio Vistuba, oncologist from the MD Anderson Center in Texas, United States. You've just been here at the uh, Oncology Forum uh, in Norway to talk about uh, uh, how uh, pathology is evolving in uh, cancer. Could you please give us a short summary of the most important topics from your presentation here today? Sure, and thank you. I'm actually a pathologist and work in the uh, translational research uh, to identify biomarkers to actually how we can select patients for the treatment. And I work particularly in lung cancer research, and that has changed a lot over the last 20 years with molecular and now immunology analysis of the tumors from the patient to try to select the best treatment options. And one thing that we have learned is that actually pathology using computational tools can help, I mean, can, can uh, facilitate the work by uh, first using those tools to investigate by the spatial composition of the immune response in tumor and we are finding good answers that can explain why patient respond or not respond to treatment and, and B, also we can use computational tools to help our work by assessing uh, different changes in the tissue after treatment. This is uh, in computational uh, tools uh, that people actually refer sometimes as AI, artificial intelligence, is really changing our the way that we do research, particularly in the setting of immunology, as I explained, and also the way in the future to do our practice, not only by looking images and making diagnosis there, but also assessing biomarker or changes uh, that the patient uh, uh, happen in the tumor after treatment. Uh, how much will this uh, impact the future of uh, cancer treatment? I think that's going to impact a lot because we are learning by different tools and computational pathology of the tumor is one of them, but also we have a lot of um, artificial intelligence data from the imaging from the patient, from the CTs, from the other form of imaging. We have also learning to data science approaches, how to capture clinical information from the clinical chart, and all those are going to help us to model better how to treat patients. So in the future, what this concept of artificial intelligence, in my opinion, will be up to the, uh, going to be available for uh, doctors actually when they see patients because they're going to do a multi-parametric analysis of the patient based on the clinical features, based on the uh, uh, imaging feature of the, of the CTs and other images and also from the characteristic of the tumor. Just a short last question. You've talked here today uh, to many of the greatest uh, oncologists here in Norway. Uh, what is your best tips to get started uh, doing this in, the, in, in their uh, clinical uh, everyday life? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to focus on, on the pathology, which is the, my field of, of work. It's basically uh, to pathology department to adapt a digital pathology, which means scan all slides produced in the laboratories and store those images in a clever way that actually can be identified in the future and and then many actually clinical pathology we may use those digital images to do daily day I mean daily activities like diagnosis and actually during pandemic many places actually enhance their digital pathology capabilities so people could work potentially from home, right, and, and, and make diagnosis. So that needs to happen throughout a pathology department, throughout the world. And then all those images can be used in the future for this research. Yes, as I mentioned, uh, using them also in the context of biomarker development or correlating with imaging like CTs or correlating with the clinical data and build this par multi-parametric or um, kind of algorithm to better uh, you know face a patient for future treatment